Okay, now that we've reviewed arithmetic sequence formulas, we're going to go ahead and take a look at example one for domain of trig functions. This says, what is the domain of f of x equals 2 tangent of theta minus pi? Now remember that domain has everything to do, I'm going to write this in red. A domain means that, um, I'm just going to make a short, simple definition. That means that when you plug in a certain input, so let's say you, you choose zero, okay, it's going to give you an output. Okay, it's not going to give you an undefined. If you plug in an input value and you get undefined, then that's not part of the domain. So some functions like x squared, you can plug in anything and you'll get something out of it. That has a domain of negative infinity to infinity. But what about this tangent function? Can you plug anything in for theta here? Theta is the variable and pi is uh, a constant. Can I plug anything in for theta? Well, if you recall, um, for tangent functions, they do have asymptotes, right? And for example, in this graph, if you try to plug in negative pi over 2, you're not going to get anything back. You're going to get undefined. Same thing for pi over 2, as we saw in the charts. Okay, so that, that is a confirmation. Let's go ahead and write asymptote here as well. That trick, uh, tangent functions don't have an unlimited domain. So the real question is, how do we figure out what its domain actually is? Well, that's what we're going to do in this video. Step one is going to be to write the function in terms of sine and cosine. Now, why is that? Now, we know tangent is sine over cosine with the quotient identities. Um, so therefore, instead of having 2 tangent of theta minus pi, it's going to become 2 sine of theta minus pi over cosine of theta minus pi. You keep what's on the inside the same. But the reason that we're writing it as a fraction is because now we have a denominator. And we know that you can't have zero in the denominator. So when we, when we first talk, talked about domain and precalc, you learned that you can't take the square root of a negative. You can't have zero in the denominator. There were some other restrictions that we learned, all these famous restrictions. And a fraction is a big one. You cannot have zero in the bottom. So, for example, whenever this is equal to zero, it's not part of the domain. This up here won't matter, right? No matter what you plug into the top, you're going to get something back uh, because it's sine, right? Sine has an, well, I'm kind of alluding to something. I should keep my mouth shut. Anyway, it's not going to matter for the top. It's only going to matter for the bottom. Um, step two is to set the denominator not equal to zero. So we're saying that the domain cannot be anything that makes this true, right? So uh, that's because the bottom of this fraction cannot be zero. Okay, so now what? Well, we just solved this now. And good thing we've already solved trig equations. Solving an inequality is exactly the same steps, except you have a slash and the equal sign. Step three is to take the inverse of both sides. In order to get rid of this trig function on the left, I have to take the cosine inverse. Let's go ahead and underline that in pink. If I do it to the left, I have to do it to the right. That cancels the cosines right here, and I'm left with theta minus pi is not equal to cosine inverse of zero. Why are we doing this step? It's because we want to get theta by itself, because theta is our domain. If you go back to this equation, theta is the input. Let's underline that in red. And f of x, I should say f of theta, is the output. I will change that right now. OK, so the reality is there's some thetas you can plug in, and you won't get an f of theta back. So what are those? OK, so now that we've taken the inverse of both sides for step three, this leads us to step four, which is to evaluate that inverse on the right. What is cosine inverse of zero? I tell my students, look how I have three red arrows here. You're going to write three different numbers out uh, as a pattern, because when you have three, you can easily see the pattern. So the first one is one pi over two. That's because cosine is equal to zero at pi over two. If we pull up the unit circle, we can see that the x value is zero. Okay, the next place where x is 0 is at 3 pi over 2. So therefore, uh, we're going to write 3 pi over 2. And if we go to the unit circle, you'd have to go all the way back around um, pi units more, which is going to bring you to 5 pi over 2. Basically, they're just odd numbers, right? The next would be 7 pi over 2, blah, 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 blah. So, but if you write the first three, the reason you're doing that is you can start to see the pattern. All the coefficients are odd numbers, which is why we did a review of that pattern uh, recognizing patterns and writing arith arithmetic sequence formulas for them. Step five is to isolate the variable. 
So now we're going to add pi to both sides to get rid of it on the left. And now we have theta is not equal to pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and 5 pi over 2 plus pi. Now again, what I like to do is I like to put coefficients next to all of the numerators just so I can see that, hey, this is just simply hopping in odd numbers. So that will help me recognize my pattern. Okay, so step five, isolate the variable. We have theta is isolated. Awesome. Now all we have to do is basically figure what this is. Now the, th the thing is, you are actually adding pi to each of these numbers because they're part of a sequence and they're part of what theta could be. And so all of these numbers are going to be increased by pi. So let's go ahead and do that. In order to do that, step six, we're going to write a general formula for the inverse. Um, so this is our inverse, by the way, cosine inverse of zero. In order to do that, we're going to have to add this pi in. Uh, in order to do that, we have to get, make it a denominator of two. So we're going to add two pi over two to each of these. So each of these coefficients is going to be added by two. The denominator is going to stay two. So it's going to become three, five, seven, just like that. Now. Actually, it really didn't alter the domain by adding that pi. Um, however, sometimes it will. So you need to make sure and always do those steps. Now, this says all of the numerators are still odd. Therefore, we can write a general formula because we know all odd numbers are 2n minus 1. Theta cannot be equal to 2n minus 1 times pi over 2. Now, my students get confused by this, so let me be very clear. The only thing that's different in all three of these numbers is those coefficients. Everything else is in terms of pi over 2. Since all of them are odd, we can write 2 in minus 1 and replace all of them with that. So what we're saying is the domain is long as theta is not equal to 2 in minus 1 pi over 2, I can plug anything else in. And just to reiterate, the reason we got that is because we took tangent, we set it equal to a fraction, and then we said cosine of theta minus pi could not be equal to zero, and we solved, and we got something that theta could not be. So as an example, just to clarify, just to you know be specific, let's just say that you chose n is equal to one here, right? You would get two minus one, which is one, and you'd get pi over two. We're saying theta cannot be pi over two. Let's check and see if we're right. Okay, so if we make n equal to one, and we plug in that we get pi over 2, like we said. So let's plug that in for theta. Pi over 2 minus pi is negative pi over 2. Now, if we go to the unit circle and look at negative pi over 2, which would be like this, we get um, this point, tangent is y over x, negative 1 over 0. So tangent is undefined there. So this is a confirmation that, yes, pi over 2 is not part of the domain, because when you plug it in, you get undefined. So any odd coefficient up here times pi over 2 is not going to yield an output. Therefore, this is our domain. And sometimes it's, well, actually, it's perfectly fine if you write your domain in sort of negative terms, sort of what it can't be. So we're saying the domain uh, can't be such, theta cannot be equal to any odd coefficient pi over 2. It can be anything else. It just can't be that. And again, confirming that with our graph, we can see that tangent exists everywhere except for these asymptotes at pi over 2. Now, it just so happened that this coincided with the actual domain of the normal tangent function. But that's because our original equation uh, was subtracting by pi. If, we'd been, if we had been subtracting by, say, pi over 2 or pi over 4, it would alter the domain. But you would actually go through the exact same steps to get there. OK, folks, that's it for this example of finding the domain of this tangent function. If you have any other questions about it, let me know.